folks and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk a little bit more about genital piercings. Now when a lot of folks are interested in getting genital piercings, one of the things that I find holds people back is just not really being sure of what the process is going to be like, what they can expect, um, and kind of what's going to happen. And I think that's a really valid concern. I hear the same feedback from clients about getting their first intimate waxes or even just getting a massage because they know they'll have to be undressed. Because people aren't really sure what the process is going to look like or what to expect, it makes people a little too nervous or a little too scared to even attempt getting these things done. And as someone who also struggles with anxiety and nerves, I 100% understand. So today I'm going to break down what you can expect as the process from getting a genital piercing done. Um, and this will be very broad applying to any genital piercing, any anatomy, um, and if you like this maybe I'll do some more specific breakdowns. But to start, if you're looking to get a genital piercing done, I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest scheduling an appointment. This is not really a piercing that you want to do on a walk-in basis, um, and for a lot of piercers they require appointments for these piercings because they do take a little bit longer and we like to have that time set aside. I know for some clients, if you're like an impulsive type and you just decide you want to get the piercings, you got to just show up and do it that day. Um, but I just, appointments are definitely the way to go for more intimate, cautious work like this. I always book far more time for genital piercings than I do for nearly other piercing service that I do because we've got to do anatomy consults. There's a lot more talking and discussing with clients. It's a much more precise piercing. And I also just like to have some extra time to spend with people because you never know the piercing afterwards. They might have a lot of questions. There might end up being a lot to discuss in regards to their anatomy. The client might just need to take a couple of minutes after piercing to kind of recollect themselves and be ready to go back out into the world. There's lots of different factors. So to start, book an appointment. Uh, going hand in hand with that uh, is obviously like doing your research. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this too much here because I talk about it a whole bunch over on my blog and on other videos, but you know, before you're getting something as serious um, and as big of a commitment as a genital piercing, like please do your research, make sure you understand that these are anatomy dependent piercings, make sure you understand what the potential risks of these piercings are, make sure you understand how long they're going to take to heal and what that process is going to look like. Um, just do a little due diligence. It's your genitals. It's really not something to take like super lightly and just hop in and get pierced off the cuff. So, you know, do some research. Now when you show up for your appointment, what's probably going to happen is they're going to check your ID immediately first thing. we got to make sure that you are over the age of 18 for our piercer to even be looking at that part of your body, let alone touching you. So please make sure you have some form of identification. Then normally what happens is you'll fill out some paperwork, your consent form to get pierced, and the piercer will do a consultation. So we'll bring you back into the piercing room and we're going to take a look at the area and see if you have the anatomy for the piercing that you're looking to get done, and if you do, what your jewelry options will be. This is really important because no two anatomies down there are the like. There is so much variation in genitals, more so than probably any other anatomy that we work with as piercers. So until we actually see the anatomy we're working with, there's really no way for us as piercers to say, here's the size of jewelry that you'll need, or here's the style of jewelry that you'll need. It's super variable person to person. So we like to start with a consultation. For a lot of clients, this can be one of the most difficult parts of the process because you have just met this piercer like three minutes ago and you are now going to be getting undressed in front of them. And there's not really a great way to like leave some clothing on and still do a consultation or work. Um, we, we need full access to the area where we're working to properly assess things and work. So uh, it's going to be easiest to just kind of like take everything off. Uh, knowing that this is what's going to be happening, please wear and dress accordingly and wear appropriate clothes. Um, something that's going to be comfortable and really easy to take off on the bottoms. Sweatpants are always a great choice no matter what genital piercing you're getting done. Uh, skirts and dresses also work really well because you can just pull them right up. Uh, I would wear your ugliest pair of underwear that you are not a fan of. I promise the piercer will not care that you are not wearing something super cute or attractive. Um, wear something you don't care about that's easy to take off and that's not going to catch and snag on the piercing after it's done. So like boxers, boxer briefs, like period panties, all of those are perfect things to wear, but please do not show up for genital piercing appointment in like the most expensive lacy thong that you own. I am not responsible if it gets ruined during this process. Uh, and then easy to take off shoes. This is the one that I feel like everyone forgets because you're probably going to need to take your shoes off to get your pants to your bottoms off anyway. Now you don't have to take your shoes off, but most folks end up doing so, and it's also just more comfortable. Um, so don't wear shoes like Converse or Doc Martens. You're going to have to completely lace all the way back up to get on and off. Something you can slip your feet right in and out of, flip-flops if it's the season. That's perfect for this. 
So you're gonna get undressed, you're gonna hop up on the piercing chair, the piercer is gonna do an assessment. So with gloves on, you might think it's crazy that I have to specify this is how it should be done, but it is. With gloves on, the piercer will go ahead and take a look at your anatomy. You may feel them doing some touching and some pressing. Depending on the type of piercing we're thinking about doing, you may feel them like pressing around on the area, um, almost even like a pinching sensation, just kind of checking and assessing the tissue that's there. Nothing during the consultation is painful or like uncomfortable, but it can be a little bit weird to have a stranger getting so up close and personal with those intimate parts of you, but it's just so that we can assess how much tissue is there, if there's enough for us to pierce, and how it lays in different positions so that we know what jewelry to start you with, because all of those factors change the jewelry that we're able to use initially. Once you've done the consultation, the piercer will have a conversation with you. If you don't have the anatomy for a piercing, they will let you know that. And typically they'll also explain why. It's definitely a little bit of a red flag if a piercer just goes, oh yeah, you can't get this, why? You just can't. Um, they should be explaining, like let's say for example, someone's coming in for a VCH. If you don't have enough hood to pierce, I cannot pierce it. And your piercer should explain that to you. I personally really like using a hand mirror for these interactions. I'll pass the client a little mirror that they can hold and look at and we'll talk about their anatomy and why it may or may not work for what we're doing. If you do have the anatomy for this piercing, your piercer will let you know that as well, and then we can move on to jewelry pickout. For some piercings and some anatomies, we can start with decorative options, so that's really fun and exciting. We'll head back up front, we'll talk about different gemstones or opals or colors we can start with, and we'll go from there. For other piercings, we may have one option that's just going to be the best or safest option to pierce you with, and the piercer will let you know that as well. They'll be like, hey, with your anatomy for this piercing, you are getting this plain captive bead ring, and once it heals, you can do fun stuff, but this is what you're gonna get. But we determine the jewelry that we're gonna use. The consultation is also a great time to ask any questions that you might have that you think you might forget to ask after the piercing or you want to ask before piercing gets started. These questions can include things like healing, taking care of it, clothing that you can wear. They can also be questions about sex, sexuality, and function. We are doing a genital piercing and it is going to affect those things. So if you have questions like how long before I can do it again, how long before I can do very specific practices with it, especially if you're getting a piercing for a very specific purpose or a very specific kink, or if you just have questions about the safety surrounding those activities. Uh, your piercer should be comfortable discussing with these things with you in a professional manner. Now, in a professional manner is the key word. Your piercer should not make like overt advances on you. They should definitely not flirt with you during a genital piercing, um, and they shouldn't make things weird. The same goes for the client. Please do not flirt with the piercer who is doing your genital piercing. Please do not make things weird or creepy. It is one thing entirely to be like, hey, so uh, when can I have sex with my partner again after getting this piercing? It is another thing entirely to be like, I bet you think this piercing's really hot, huh? You see a bunch of those. When, uh, when could I use it again? Would you help me try it out? Ugh. I hate even doing that fake thing, but it, it is something that happens occasionally. Um, so, you know, your piercer should not be doing that stuff to you. You should not be doing that stuff to your piercer. We should all just be respectful and polite. After the consultation, you'll probably go back into the lobby and hang out for a little bit while your jewelry needs to sterilize and your piercer gets your room ready. Some studios have stuff pre-sterilized, so you might just roll straight from the consult into piercing, but a lot of more modern studios are going to use a statum autoclave. They're going to sterilize everything right before, so you can hang out in the lobby, try and relax, browse around on your phone, just try and get yourself into a good headspace for the piercing. Then, once everything's ready and set up, you'll head back into the piercing room. You'll get everything off on the bottom half again and get up on the table in whatever position is comfortable for both you and the piercer, and the process will begin. It normally begins with cleaning the area um, with some form of cleaner, usually a mild saline, sometimes depending on the piercing, alcohol and iodine, really depends. We'll clean the area and we'll make some marks. I always offer for clients to look at the marks in the mirror. Um, most clients for general piercings decline. They're like, I'll just see it when it's done. Um, but if you do want to see the marks and see the placement for your piercing, your piercer should show you that and go over that with you. Once everything's marked, you're cleaned, you're prepped, it's time to get the actual piercing. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie to anyone and say that these piercings are painless. They're obviously painful, but in the grand scheme of things, I really find that they're not as bad as people expect. Uh, if you've ever been waxed in that particular area, very comparable to like a shitty wax strip. Um, I like using that comparison because like a bad wax pull or like a shitty wax strip, like genuinely fucking sucks. Um, if you get waxed, you know what I mean. When someone goes to pull and they pull the wrong way, that shit is awful. Um, but it also only lasts like a couple of seconds and people go and get waxed every four weeks. Like it is not that bad. Um, other clients say that it's very comparable to accidentally zipping things up in their fly. Uh, again, 
famously, not a great feeling, but also not the end of the world. Um, and certain genital piercings are really not that bad. Things like VCHs, PAs, HCHs, I have clients tell me constantly that getting their nipples pierced were worse than those. Um, so while it's normal to be nervous and stressed, especially about a genital piercing, and it can be an intense piercing, it also is oftentimes not as bad as people expect it to be. The piercing itself is typically over very, very quickly. We get the jewelry in and you're all finished up, and then we do some cleanup. Genital piercings are going to bleed. Uh, it is just the nature of the area. It is a very vascular area. There's lots of blood flow. Genital piercings are notorious for bleeding. In particular, triangles, PAs, apodravias, and ampelangs bleed quite a bit. Uh, all genital piercings can have bleeding, but those four are going to be very bleedy right after they're pierced and for the next couple of days. So what's probably going to happen is your piercer is going to show you your piercing in the mirror, show you how awesome it looks, uh, and then they're going to wrap you up. <laughs> We're going to bandage you up. Uh, it might be wrapping you in gauze. It might be a special diaper for the area. It might be a pad or a panty liner for your underwear. Um, but we are going to put something in place to absorb the blood and your piercer should warn you that this is probably going to be bleeding on and off for the next couple of days and to expect that and clothe and dress yourself accordingly. This time period may also be a time period where a piercer asks if you would be comfortable with pictures. Most piercers have it on the consent form you filled out when you first get in, a photo release, and then they'll ask consent again if you consented on your release while you're back there. Um, with good professional piercers, these are just narrow close-up photos of just the piercing for portfolio purposes to showcase that the piercer does these piercings, knows how to do them, um, what they look like, and how they look on different anatomies. No one has to say yes to photos if you're not comfortable with it. Um, you don't have to sign the photo release and you don't have to say yes. Please never feel pressured to agree to a photograph, especially of an intimate part of your body. However, a lot of folks are fine with that photo because there's nothing identifying in it. Like it is literally, it's literally so close up. Uh, if you're over 18, you can take a look at my portfolio on my website and see some examples of this. Um, but for the clients who are comfortable with photos, uh, thank you, you are amazing, you are phenomenal. Um, I totally understand people's hesitancy about pictures and genital piercings in particular can be really hard to get good photos of. So if you're comfortable with that and you let your piercer take pictures, you are awesome. Um, you really help us out a lot in order to be able to show this piercing to other clients to show that we know how to do it, but also just to show how it looks on different anatomies. Unfortunately, there is a lot of piercers who only feature very narrow, specific anatomies, body types, and skin tones online when it comes to all piercings, but especially genital piercings. Uh, and that can make it really disheartening and really hard for clients to see their own bodies reflected in that work and feel like this is a piercing that they can get. Um, so the more we can showcase different bodies, different skin tones, different anatomies, um, different everything, and normalize that piercings are for everyone, um, that really means a lot to so many people who see their bodies reflected in these portfolios. So if you are comfortable with photos, thank you so much, you are great. If you are not comfortable with photos, that is still beyond valid um, and you should never like have a picture taken if it makes you feel uncomfortable and there is like literally nothing wrong with that. Once everything's done, pictures are taken, you're all bandaged up and wrapped up, you'll get back into your clothes. This is normally the part where I like to talk about aftercare. I give a pretty brief but comprehensive rundown of genital piercing aftercare because I know for the most part aftercare goes in one ear and out the other when you've just been pierced. Um, but I like to give folks a written copy. That way you can go home and read over everything. I email it to people, that way you have it. Um, so we'll talk about aftercare cleaning, follow up with any last minute questions you may have now that the piercing is done, and then you're finished up. You'll walk out to the front of the studio, you'll pay, and you'll be able to go home. Most folks expect to be like, cowboy walk-in out of the studio after they get a genital piercing and while some piercings have a little bit of that most folks are pleasantly surprised once they get their clothing back on how comfortable it is and how it really doesn't feel like much of anything after getting pierced which is that's exactly what we want um i suggest if you're getting a genital piercing especially a more intense one to just take the rest of your day off uh, go to the piercing studio get pierced go straight home relax, put your feet up on the couch, watch some movies, eat some good food. Um, I would not, I mean, it's your body, it's up to you to do what you want to, but I'd probably not suggest getting a genital piercing right before you're about to go to work. 
or right before you're about to like run a marathon or walk all over the city. Um, it's definitely not going to feel the best to like immediately be super physically active on these piercings. So um, planning a genital piercing for like your Friday and having a few days off to rest and relax with it afterwards just to be on the safe side uh, is typically a really smart idea and what I suggest any client do. The first few days of the genital piercing can definitely be a little bit intimidating, especially if it is the type of piercing that is more prone to bleeding, which is most of them. Um, after about the first week, that bleeding subsides substantially or completely stops, and you don't have to worry about it anymore, and then it's just smooth sailing through your aftercare, ideally. Um, from there, aftercare varies person to person, piercing to piercing, and your piercer should have gone over all that with you. Um, and your piercer is still available to you as a resource to use through the healing process. Our job does not finish when we do that piercing and you leave the studio. Our job continues on as you're healing, if you have any questions during the healing process, if you need any help with anything, even long after you're healed, if you need help with like finding specific jewelry or you're looking for your piercing to do something that it's not currently doing for you, we can help you with all of that. Um, and your piercer is present for literally everything. That includes talking about some difficult but intimate subjects at any point during this process. Whether it's talking about sex and sexuality, uh, why you're getting this piercing, what you want it to function for, what you're looking for from it. Um, you gotta communicate that to us in order for us to give you the piercing that's gonna do what you want. Um, that can include talking about gender affirmation. If you are trans or non-binary, or if this piercing is in any way going to be gender affirming for you, um, you can talk with your piercer about that, and we can offer maybe some advice or some guidance about placement or jewelry or what we can do with the piercing to help it be even more gender affirming. Um, that can also include healing and bodily reclamation after trauma. A lot of clients choose to seek out body piercings after instances of sexual assault or intimate partner violence, and getting a piercing in these intimate places can be a really powerful way of taking back your body and having having anatomy that that person has never touched and never hurt. And that can be really empowering. Um, but piercing can also bring up a lot of those trauma memories and sometimes be a little triggering to have a stranger working on your body in that way. And the experience of pain in that part of your body can also be a little triggering. Um, so your piercer is there to talk with you if any emotions come up before, during, and after piercing, even days or weeks after piercing, if it potentially triggers any memories, if you're having any hard times with it. Or the opposite, if the piercing has been really healing and really empowering for you and you're feeling a lot better about stuff and you just want to talk to someone who gets it, um, a good piercer is present for you for all of those interactions, be it at the time of piercing or afterwards, whatever you need. When it comes to getting any piercing, I think it's normal to be a little bit nervous, especially if you aren't sure what the process is gonna look like, but it is extra normal to be nervous when it comes to getting a genital piercing. So I hope that by breaking down what this process looks like and what you can expect from going in the studio, this helps those of you who are interested in these piercings feel a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more confident going into a studio and seeking out this type of work. If you have any questions for me about like how genital piercing processes work or any specific questions, leave them down in the comments below. Um, if y'all like this video and want to see me do more like this about piercing processes and genital piercings in particular, um, as many of you know, this is uh, one of my favorite things to do piercing wise, so I would love to talk more about it. And as per usual, your like and support means the world to me. So if you like this video, if you like the content I put out, please hit like and subscribe. It really does help so much. I can't wait to sit down and chat with y'all again soon, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Bye!